This is Twit. You have a fancy car or a residential or office door lock, which operates as follows. Your smartphone containing the locks matching app and essentially or effectively its key is in your pocket. You approach your car or your home's or office's front door and just touch the lock. The lock's capacitive sensor senses your touch. So it emits a Bluetooth low energy, a BLE, ping to query for any nearby, in this case, quick set Kivo smart lock apps that may be nearby. The app in the phone in your pocket receives the Bluetooth low energy ping and responds. So they engage in a super crypto, triple scoop, post quantum, impossible to crack, handshake negotiation. And now, satisfied that one of its authorized owners is indeed nearby, the lock disengages to allow entry, and all is happy. But now, we have a different scenario. A bad guy team wants to gain entry into that smart lock protected car or residence or office. So, one of them arranges to place a Bluetooth low energy relay near the user's phone, perhaps in an adjacent office cubicle or next to their locker while they're working out or in the coffee break room, which they frequent, wherever, it doesn't matter. The other member of the team waits some discreet distance away from the car, the residence, or the office that's about to be breached. When the first team member messages to the second that the unsuspecting user's smartphone is within range of their Bluetooth, their remote Bluetooth relay, The second member of the team simply walks up to the locked car, residence, or office and touches its lock. Exactly as before, the lock sends out a BLE discovery ping, which the BLE relay forwards to its matching endpoint. That distant endpoint simply and blindly rebroadcasts the ping it received, which the user's smartphone picks up and acknowledges. It replies, and its reply is similarly forwarded back to the BLE relay, which is now positioned near the lock. So once again, they engage in the most unbreakable, bazillion qubit, quantum entangled crypto that the world has ever hosted until the lock becomes satisfied that only the user's smartphone can possibly be at the other end of the link. So it disengages its lock to admit the individual whom it presumes is authorized to gain access. Unfortunately, this is not fiction, except in this example for my overkill use of deeply entangled quantum crypto. The point being, this oh-so-simple Bluetooth low-energy relay attack entirely defeats any systems crypto, no matter whether it's pre or post quantum. And as I said, this is not fiction. Last September, after successfully executing exactly this scenario in the field, the UK's NCC group notified several smart lock makers that they had a problem. Their systems were vulnerable to a simple BLE relay attack and the NCC group notified these lockmakers that they would eventually be publishing the news of this, which they did last week. The accompanying security advisory simply explains, quote, an attacker with BLE si- within BLE signal range of a smartphone or key fob authorized to unlock a Kivo smart lock can conduct a relay attack to unlock the lock over long distances. And the problem is 
there is no obvious in-band way of detecting and preventing this abuse, which is to say that Bluetooth Low Energy does not offer robust endpoint proximity protection. Various out-of-band solutions have been considered, one being for the smartphone to use its own GPS to ascertain whether it's physically near the lock it has been paired with. But concerns over GPS's availability and speed have been a concern, and local GPS um, jamming and spoofing technology is available. Another out-of-band solution considered was to have the app monitoring its owner's physical movement and to disable any lock negotiation with the smartphone, oh, sorry, if the smartphone was motionless immediately before the negotiation began, since that would never be expected in the system's normal use case. But any scenario where the user would be moving, even if many miles away, would defeat such anti-spoof protection. So GPS would seem to be the best, if still imperfect, solution. But the nature of the problem suggests that the, the use of Bluetooth Low Energy, convenient though it is, was not the best idea in the first place. If our smartphones were equipped with radios which incorporated reliable time-of-flight measuring capabilities, then it would be possible to obtain spoof-proof data and direct physical proximity assurance. But today's smartphones are not yet that smart. So, again, uh, if... Uh, Apparently, the manufacturers scrambled around. I looked at the t at the timeline uh, that these guys, the NCC group, uh, posted in their advisory, and you know the, it, the 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 issue got escalated up to the you know from the the manufacturers and retailers up to the behind the scenes designers whose company name you never learn where you know this was all actually created and there was a lot of head scratching going on and consternation for you know it to be discovered and would be published that their system was susceptible to this kind of spoofing again uh obviously not uh widespread it would be used in a targeted attack case. But, you know, if bad guys knew that this was possible, uh, this BLE uh, relay technology is not difficult to create. Uh, and it, you know, robustly unlocks a target at some distance. So uh, probably not such a good idea to have uh, designed a system that could be spoofed like that.